hello everyone and welcome to my youtube channel it's been a while since i posted a video i was actually working on something and now i'm ready to present it to you and uh, i'm going to present to you a tutorial on cooking wild mushrooms which i am going to take you step by step so that you get to understand the process now these wild mushrooms we call them in western wawa or wawa uh, i think the luos call it obuolo and uh, i don't know what other tribes call it in their native language now these mushrooms they grow seasonally they have got like one season in a year which is around march april may thereabouts that is when we have them in plenty and if you come from the western kenya you can notice during that time they just grow anywhere in the bush or anywhere in the grass you you can always just pick them these mushrooms are actually edible so they are safe for human consumption now in the olden days what our grandparents used to do and my grandmother I used to see her do this is she used to pick those mushrooms or she used to send us out in the forest to go and pick these mushrooms and then once you pick them you select them dry them and then they are preserved in a special way now um, I don't know if you can see that that those ones are actually dry and uh, preserved if you can see that I think I need to open the pack so that you can see one piece and get to understand exactly what I mean they're actually preserved and they smell really nice they're very high in protein and why were our grandparents uh, preserving food food was preserved so that we have got a supply all year round that is why food is preserved and so you used to find that during the dry season or when these mushrooms are out of season there will always be a supply of the mushrooms I mean, there's always be a supply of the mushrooms or vegetables or whatever it is that is preserved. So that is the that was the importance of preserving food in the olden days. Now, as you all know, Kenyajis is Kenyajis is about taking you back to forgotten foods, the foods that our grandparents ate. The food, if you get to understand this concept, you'll know you you'll realize that in the olden days, our, our grandparents lived longer; they were healthier free from lifestyle diseases so that is why i have this passion to take us back to forgotten foods because we kind of like have forgotten these foods and so we're just trying to bring ourselves back to the memories of these foods and trying to embrace that culture of eating these forgotten foods now if you're looking for plant protein these mushrooms are the best source of plant protein because um, they're very rich in protein and minerals and uh, they're easy to make Though the processes are quite complicated. The process right now, once it is preserved, is quite complicated. It's not like the ordinary mushrooms that you buy from the supermarket. So let's not com confuse the two. You'll find people asking you, are they the button mushrooms? Are they the, um, are they the oyster mushrooms? No, these are very different because uh, the button mushrooms and oyster mushrooms, I think, are grown in uh, specific environments for a specific shorter period of time. But these ones, they just come into season once in a year and uh, they are preserved. I don't know if the light is clear. Yeah, you can see that. They are preserved and uh, like these specific ones are preserved with the special munyu. And uh, so you find that we have got that all year supply. So what happens is we have managed to network with farmers and uh, not necessarily farmers because i think these mushrooms just grow everywhere but we have special people who understand the preservation of these mushrooms so what they do they collect from different places i remember like what i was saying about my grandmother she used to tell us go collect mushrooms and then when we pick them together we bring them together to hand and she puts them she dries them up and then she preserves them in that special way so that we have got a supply of mushrooms all through now this is exactly what these people do they pick they collect the mushrooms from different people or they ask different people to collect mushrooms and sell to them and then what they do is they preserve it in a special way they are dried by the way if you buy the dried one like if you're traveling it can take you like a whole year this can stay a whole year actually they are well preserved so if, as long as you keep it in an airtight container free from moisture you're perfect you're good so First things first, I'm going to take you through the cooking of these mushrooms. I know most people wonder how are they cooked. I, I would like to understand how they are cooked so that 
you can cook them by yourselves if you buy a pack from us of the dried mushrooms but if you feel that the process is too long for you or you don't really understand how to cook this and you still want to enjoy your nutritious mushrooms which just grow by themselves organically we also do pre-cooking of these mushrooms and sell to you a pack of that so that you just go and finish off but this tutorial is going to take you through the whole process from the selecting from the cleaning from the pre-cooking and then from the frying up to the up to the plate now when you want to eat your meal so i hope you're going to enjoy this video and uh, at the end of it all i will appreciate if you put some comments or special notes that you've uh, observed i'll really appreciate because through your comments that's how we improve and that's how we grow thank you so much and welcome to my tutorial so the first stage when you get your pack of mushrooms is uh, to carefully select them so that they are free from any dirt any debris any stones any excess soil because uh, by the in the nature of uh, sun dry by the nature of uh, them being sun dried i mean they are bound to get all this stuff getting in them because they just sun dried outside in the open air so we have to take care of this stage first of carefully selecting them before we go to the next stage so the next stage is to put the mushrooms in a basin and then with cold tap running water i prefer to use the cold water because they don't they don't get the mushrooms uh, mushy you know warm water will tend to make them uh, become mushy but the cold water keeps them solid and then uh, you're able to get all the loose soil out of the mushrooms so this process in this process i'm going to soak them for like 10 minutes so that all the soil can be loosened before now we wash them so now after soaking them for the 10 minutes what you do is now you have to start washing them and when you're washing them you wash like you're splashing you know splashing like to get all the soil up i think that the i don't know how to explain that in a better terms but um um like splashing them all over on the basin so that you can get all the soil out interestingly when you start washing these mushrooms that's when you start seeing things coming out you know all the debris all the um, uh, things that were hidden inside the mushrooms so as you can see what i'm showing you in the video this is kind of like the last stage the last stage the mushrooms are clean but it's taken a whole lot of like 10 washes you have to wash them like so many times so that you're very sure that it is free from any soil or any debris because at the point of selection, there could be some that were left in the mushrooms. Sometimes I even pick like a piece by piece just to check and see. You know, check and see and be sure that uh, all the soil is out. And then I use a strainer or a sieve to just put the mushrooms there. Through that, I'm able to see in my basin of the water that is remaining in, the, in it, I mean, if there's any soil that was left. So as you can see in this process, like our mushrooms are very clean. There is no soil at all because it's very disgusting when you're trying to eat the mushrooms and they have got loose soil if they've not been washed properly. So 10 washes, my friends, that is when you get this kind of result. So you have to be very patient with this process to make sure you get the best end product of your mushrooms. So at this stage now we want to start the first prepping of these mushrooms and so we put a saucepan on fire and then add in a little water and then into that water we are going to put our munyu munyu musherekha if you all know it the traditional marinade just a little and uh, this is going to tenderize the mushrooms and uh, it's also going to make them actually at the first stage of prepping they usually like bulk like they become bigger in size i don't know how that happens it's very interesting so at this stage when you put the saucepan of water plus the munyu you cover it and then you let it boil before you now place in the mushrooms so that is what should happen okay now our water boiled and then we put in our mushrooms and then uh, they'll start bubbling as you can see in the saucepan 
you've got to be very careful at this stage to make sure that when you cover, you keep checking on them so that to, to avoid spillage because it's bound to spill to spill off as you can see now it's bubbling really well and during this process actually the mushrooms bulk in size and uh, they change color and they become tender and uh, edible so as you can see our mushrooms are bubbling you have to keep turning them from time to time for even cooking as you can see now our mushrooms are cooked now what we are doing is we are taking them through a refreshing process refreshing is just to remove the extra menu of the mushrooms but the nutrients are retained so you pass them through a sieve in a cold tap running in cold tap running water so from here now we'll go now to the next stage of frying them to eating them At this stage you really don't need much when frying these mushrooms you just need your onion and tomato that's it so you lightly fry your onion with a little oil. I prefer to use coconut oil. It just gives that nice taste and smell in the uh, mushrooms. But according to your type of oil of preference, it's all up to you. Everybody has got a different uh, preference for the type of oil that they use. So you slightly fry your onions golden brown they shouldn't burn. I can see mine were almost almost burning. <laughs> That's not really so good. And then now with your tomatoes, you put in your tomatoes and then you fry them till very, very soft. Till very, very soft. Like that. So our tomatoes have gotten soft and so now you just place in the mushrooms. I mean, that's it. And do not forget to season your mushrooms. Very little salt according to your taste preference. In these mushrooms, we don't add any spice. It's just pure, plain cooking, actually. Just plain cooking. You fry them, lightly fry the mushrooms nicely till they are blend very well with the tomatoes and the onions. And you can smell them. Actually, they bring out a very good smell as you're cooking them. So no spice, just plain like that. That's how our grandparents cooked. So as we continue frying our mushrooms until they are like a little dry like they've blended in well with the tomatoes and onions now you add in your milk you actually have got three choices to make from your source of these mushrooms you can either use milk fresh whole milk or you can use uh, um, coconut milk i love coconut milk the taste of coconut milk now with the coconut oil comes out really nicely or you can use cream cooking cream if you have you 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 are okay with that option so either fresh milk fresh uh, cow milk fresh uh, i mean coconut milk or fresh cream so when you add it in that is going to now be your sauce you're not adding in any water that's it and that milk just brings out some really nice thick sauce like in my case, I had to use uh, I had to use uh, whole milk to make the sauce, and then you cook them. You let the sauce now the milk now with the the sauce for the mushrooms takes like around uh, five to ten minutes just to steep in nicely so that it can blend in also very well with the rest of the items in the food, and you will see the final result in the next video. As you can see, this is the final product of our nice thick and creamy mushrooms looking really nice on the plate and then they you can actually have them with the kenyaji vegetables in this case i chose the murenda kunde to go with these mushrooms it really just glides through the throat as you eat and then your accompaniment can either be ugali ugali really goes well with it actually ugali is the best preference you buy from us the dried mushrooms this is actually how the pack looks option is pre-cooked this is how the pre-cooked mushrooms actually look in the pack thank you for watching my video i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and we'll be bringing more more tutorials on different items on our product list one by one step by step i think the next item is going to be the dried vegetables i'm sure majority of you in the diaspora you really love to buy dried vegetables from kenyages but you really don't understand how to prepare them sometimes you get comments like the vegetables have a lot of soil the vegetables are like this and that so i'm going to preempt all that and teach you how these vegetables are supposed to be made so that it becomes easy for you when you are purchasing that pack from us to go and prepare and enjoy your meal back so kindly subscribe to my channel 
so that the next time I post a video, you're notified when I do. I mean, do, do not forget to tap the notification button. It looks like a bell kind of a sign besides the subscribe button. I think once you press the subscribe button, that notification bell comes so that you're notified when I post the next video so that you don't miss out. Thank you so much and enjoy your Christmas holiday. Enjoy responsibly and hope to see you next time. I'm not taking a break. I'll be here because I have to serve a lot of my diaspora customers with the dried vegetables. If you need to place an order, please do in advance. But we are already prepping and the, the, the drying uh, process is ongoing for those who have already placed their orders. But we just want to be well stocked during this season so that anytime you're traveling back home, back, back to your countries where you reside, you can always take a pack with you. Thank you so much and keep it locked, Kenyages. Thank you and bye-bye.